As part of your Venture Matrix school project, you'll be working with children and young people, so you are required to complete the Working with Young People assessment. Watching this video will provide you with the relevant training before you complete your assessment. The video will cover the following sections. What is expected of you? What is safeguarding? Safeguarding concerns? Reporting concerns? Professionalism and professional distance? Your training is about to begin. Once you have watched the video, you can then move on to your assessment. Throughout the duration of your Venture Matrix School project, you are expected to act professionally at all times and remember that you are representing the university. We ask that you adhere to the next few points regarding your conduct when working on your project. Before you begin working on your project, you must sign a self-declaration form. This may have been given to you in your seminar or you may receive it by an email. If this documentation is not complete, you will not be able to work with children. If you are unable to attend a scheduled meeting due to unavoidable or unforeseen circumstances, whether this is at a school or at the university, you must call or email a member of the Venture Matrix team in plenty of time. All contact details for the team can be found on Blackboard on the Venture Matrix tab on your module page. Many schools have a no phone policy in place. Please respect this rule at all times when on school premises. If you need to take an important phone call, speak with a member of staff at the school and they can advise you where you can do this. The same applies if you are taking part in an event on the university campus. You should not use your mobile phone. If you need to take an important call, speak with a member of the Venture Matrix team and they can advise you where you can do this. It is not your responsibility to discipline any misbehaving pupils. If a pupil or pupils are misbehaving, ask a member of staff for assistance on how they would prefer you to deal with the situation. Safeguarding is the action that is taken to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm. As you will be working with children and young people throughout your project, it is vital that you understand the process of safeguarding. We all have a statutory duty to safeguard and promote the welfare of children. It is the responsibility of all adults working within a school to safeguard children. This includes you. Although you are not a teacher or a permanent member of staff at the school, you have a part to play in reporting any safeguarding concerns to the relevant person. The next section of this training will help you understand what you need to do if you have any concerns about the welfare of a child. Safeguarding our child protection concerns may involve a student such as yourself in a number of ways. These concerns can arise in a number of different circumstances. For example, a child disclosing abuse to you. You may become concerned about a child's appearance or behaviour. You may become aware of injuries that may be consistent with abuse. Another individual, child, parent or practitioner may share concerns with you about a child. You may become concerned about an adult's behaviour towards a child. As you will be working with children, it is important that you are aware of the various types of abuse that you could possibly be made aware of or that could be disclosed to you. Child abuse is any action by another person, adult or child, that causes significant harm to a child. It can be physical, sexual or emotional, but it can just as often be about a lack of love, care and attention. We know that neglect, whatever form it takes, can just be as damaging to a child as physical abuse. Other abuse types include domestic abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, child sexual exploitation, female genital mutilation, grooming, emotional abuse, child trafficking, physical abuse, online abuse, harmful sexual behaviour, bullying and cyberbullying. You can familiarise yourself with these types of abuse on the NSPCC website. If a child was to disclose any kind of abuse to you, here is what you should do. Listen carefully to the child. Avoid expressing your own views on the matter. A reaction of shock or disbelief could cause the child to shut down, retract or stop talking. You must not promise that you will keep the information that is disclosed to you a secret. You can promise to help them and explain that you will report this to someone who can help. Let them know they have done the right thing and do not delay in reporting the abuse. The sooner that the abuse is reported after the child discloses, the better. 
Report as soon as possible so details are fresh in your mind and action can be taken quickly. If you have any concerns such as those previously mentioned or any others about the health and safety of a child or young person in an education setting or feel that something may be troubling them, you should share this information with an appropriate member of staff straight away. This appropriate member of staff will be the safeguarding lead. When attending a school, you may be told who the appointed safeguarding lead is on your arrival. This is the person that you need to speak to if you have any concerns about a child and young person within an education setting. They have the main duties of care in regards to child protection. This may well be the head teacher, but it could also be another member of staff. If the safeguarding lead is not identified to you on your arrival at a school and you do have any concerns about a child or young person, you should ask the reception staff of the school to identify the safeguarding lead to you and ask if you can speak to them in private. If you are taking part in an event on the university campus, a member of the Ventimatrix team will make the safeguarding lead known to you and this is the person you need to inform if you have any concerns about a child on the day of the event. All conversations when working with children and young people should be kept professional. You are working with them to pass on your knowledge, they are not your peers. Students should always maintain a professional distance when working with children and young people. Students are advised to be cautious in relation to physical contact with children, avoiding any contact that could be considered inappropriate. A student must never invite a child back to the university or to their home or offer them a ride home. If a child asks for you to take them home, ask for their name and go back into the school and inform a teacher. You must not exchange any personal contact information with a child or young person, including email addresses or phone numbers. If a child or young person contacts you via social media, you should inform a member of the Venture Matrix team straight away. Photographs should not be taken by students at any time on school premises or of any children or young people. This includes any photographs of displays around the school or of the school grounds. Some children may not be allowed to have their picture taken due to safeguarding reasons and don't have the appropriate consent from parents. Thank you for watching the Working with Young People training. Please remember that when working on your project you are representing the university so there are expectations on how you should behave. It is vital that you understand the safeguarding process and that we all have a statutory duty to safeguard and promote the welfare of children. If you have any concerns about a child or young person whilst working on your project, you must share this information with an appropriate member of staff straight away. You must always maintain your professionalism and professional distance when working on your project. Your training is now over and you can move on to your assessment, which will relate to the video that you have just watched. Take your time to read and answer the questions. Good luck.